Sunday. Um, the people are out in the streets again, hooray. All right, and we are here um, doing something in that direction as well by doing our work. So it's Watch Me Work. It's Monday the, I don't even know what date it is, the 8th of, 8th of, June. of June. Thanks, Audrey. And um, 11 years ago, I started doing this show in the lobby of the public theater. And we've been um, doing it there ever since until, you know, COVID came and, and howl around and the public theater, the public theater especially that has been so generously supporting this effort. And a few years ago, howl around came on to help us live stream. Now they're helping us together create this beautiful community. Um, what we do basically is we work together for 20 minutes and then I take questions from you about your work and your creative process. It's, it's simple. And the idea is to just encourage you and hold space, help you hold space for your work. Um, it doesn't have to be writing, although that's my main thing. It can be any kind of work that you do because um, the process is often so similar. Okay, whether you're painting or doing dance projects or, you know, digging a ditch, building a bridge. Anyway, Audrey's gonna tell you how to get in touch. Go Audrey. Hi everybody. So if you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button on the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen, if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can tweet at Public Theater NY or um, message us in our Instagram. And that's all. Now that I've let my hair down, <laughs> I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes um, and we're going to work together. So I'll see you on the other side. Here we go.
Hey. Hey, hey. Okay, that was 20 minutes. Outside, 20 minutes in- yeah, outside the marching up Fifth Avenue. Yes. Or outside, we are marching up Fifth Avenue, we should say, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, uh, anybody got a question? So far, I don't see a question. Oh, good. I'll listen to the sounds of people doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. We've got a question. Oh, we've got three questions. Oh, my goodness. There you go. <laughs> Elaine, um, go for it. Hi, Susan Laurie. Darling. How are you? Hi, I'm all right. How are you? Hi, ah, everybody. I've known Elaine for a long time. Hey, girl, how are you doing? Good, good. How about you? All right, right here at uh, Washington Square. Where the, They're marching uh, right outside your window. It's lovely. Well, I, I just wanted to thank you so much for these classes. They've been wonderful. It's been wonderful to hear your voice and see oh, you again. Yeah. And it's uh, given me so much to carry forth to my students right now. And um, my question is, is there anything we can do for you? Oh. you said, it's a, oh, oh <laughs> you silly I girl. I know. <laughs> oh, you always <laughs> like that. You're always <laughs> like that. Um, you know, the, the thing you guys do for me and people like you who I've known for a long time and people I'm just meeting here and, um, is you do your work, you know what I mean? That's the yeah. thing that you do for me. I mean, that's the thing I do for you, you know? We, you, 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 we know, I mean, we know that in, in difficult times, I mean, or in happy times even, people read our work or people even hear that we are working and they are emboldened and excited and they feel that they're, work might be possible because we are working it's like the marcher it's like the folks marching you know that you hear about your friend who's marching or 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 so, you know being a- active and an activist in some kind of way and you feel like well i might i might be able to do that too maybe i'll come down to washington square also and that's why there are all these folks down here every day um so we encourage each other. Well, what a great question. I think you doing your work and, and you know, I, Jim, I thought about your question all weekend. Jim's beautiful question that we had on, on, on the end of day Thursday, um, you know, how we're holding space for each other, how we're encouraging each other, how our presence and our commitment to doing the work, whatever it might be, you know, um, to, kind of liberate ourselves and create a better world, liberate ourselves from the bullshit and create a better world for ourselves and the people who are coming after us and the things and the creatures that are coming after us. That's, that's what we're here for, you know? So thank you. I want to agree. You always ask the best questions. Aw, thank you for so much. You've given me so yeah. much. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine. I owe you an email, Elaine. So I got to email you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Up next, we've got Carol. Um, Carol, are you there? Hey. Am I unmute, unmuted? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey, girl. How are you? I'm, I'm doing okay. It's a tough time. Yeah. Uh, aside for two two months because we um, and some difficulty with the with the twins, my great grandbabies that we're oh. expecting. Oh, we're born four months early, prematurely, oh, and um, oh, it, we're, we're one one did not make it more than a day, but he was wonderful, and uh, one oh. is struggling, and uh, but doing well, and we've had good days. But I wanted to say that um, I've oh. learned so much from watching me work through all these years that it did it just still gives me the pattern to go and still do the work. No matter how you're feeling, and to and to write out the difficulties that you're going through, and cut and listen for the answers, and I want so much to make this a better world for this new baby. Um, oh, Carol! Every day is better. So, uh, 
every day is better, but I want the world to be a better place for him. And I want to know, I thought I'd made it a better world, but I'm disappointed <laughs> in, in, um, in that. But still writing, and I, I think books are, and creativity is more important than ever in, uh, in what we can do and in, in just supporting. And I just wanted to thank you for uh, helping give me the strength and, um, and the desire to, to, to continue on each day, do my writing and do, do the work and work out the problems within the work. And, uh, and so I, it, we're all doing a lot of praying and, and, uh, and it's going well. It's going well. This little guy is going to be something. He's going to be the one, I think, to make it a better world. <laughs> oh, Carol, I'm I mean, so sorry. I don't mean to make you sad. And we're, no, we're I don't mind. You know, you know me, girl. I don't mind. Girl, I don't mind being sad. I don't mind feeling my feelings. I know. I'm and, so I know. And and it's it's it is there's a sadness, but there's also um a, a real motivation to how do you get past I past all things that you and making it a better world when you you, know, you think you're doing all you can in different ways right um through through the years yeah. um, that's a very difficult question and I, I don't know if anyone it has to that well, or it would be a better world <laughs> well I, I i think i mean first of all for those of you who, who don't know carol i said i think like 11 years ago from our very yeah. first watch me work in the in the lobby of the public theater yeah. our very first one we weren't live streaming we were just sitting there just sitting there so carol good. was there carol has been there like every single time we've done watch me work yeah every single every single incarnation of of this this show this class and um and we were so excited about I, uh, yeah that's i, we I were remember so, and that's so the only reason i bring it up i'm I, so sorry i'm so sorry you know sweetie it's it's we'll, we'll all do fine with it and he's going to be something really special he's going to make it <laughs> but, but what do you do and you think you've done everything you know i mean for those of us you know we we think you think you've done you think you're doing the work you think we think i mean not again about the for the world you know you think right. you're doing the work we think geez i've i've looked within my heart i've looked within my soul i'm mindful in my in my interactions with my friends and 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 in my thoughts about those people i don't even know and i'm um i i feel that it's still here the shit, the bad mm -hmm. race, yeah. racism, for example, is still here because it's still here. Mm -hmm. And while a lot yeah. of us who have done the work have done work, but we we haven't, mm -hmm. we're not done yet. Yeah. Oh, I so agree. I you so know, agree. that's what I mean. I mean, that's basically we're not we're not done. And I, I feel like it's a, an opportunity in a way for each of us to to look within. Mm -hmm. and see how we how how the the culture has has poisoned each one of us we all have it to varying degrees and in varying mm -hmm. levels of you know me you know yeah. what I'm saying? i do know what you no say. longer just point to them whoever they are and say it's them because i think it's still here because we all actually still have it Mm -hmm. And if this is going to be, you know, a, a, a movement, we have to sure there are people out there who need to be thrown in jail and reprimanded for the, the crimes, the murders that they have committed. But there, it's also an opportunity for us to look within. I, I think it is. And, I, and um, mm -hmm. I remember and was very active in the, in the 60s. I can, mm -hmm. I can remember um living in new jersey then being and hearing the gunshots from plainfield in the riots and and seeing smoke and that motivated me and uh to to do things and my husband and i um got started and what and was very successful with creating uh, a youth center in a in, in an african-american small african community there that still goes it's still in existence 40 about 40 years later 
um, an after school program. And I think that um, it was one of the first after school programs. And, uh, and that I think is one of the things that are needed that uh, in, uh, in some way or another is, it was always interracial, you know, there, mm -hmm. there was things that came out of that, that was wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. and um and i think we need to educate and bring up kids and and find their interests and their creativities and let them and, but not but not only i i appreciate what you're saying carol and i think what you and what you have done and what you and your husband have done together is really righteous and beautiful um but if i may say it's not only uh, educating the the poor disadvantaged children no 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 educating the, the the advantaged children there's Absolutely. something weird about it to see like i mean i could imagine someone i mean if we were if if, if we were going to run a marathon or mary and sally were going to run a marathon and sally because just because she's white was were get, she was given a 10 mile head start mm -hmm. absolutely that's what it's like every single day and we all have to realize that and some and for someone like me sometimes it's even hard to admit that i struggle with that kind of bullshit cuz i don't want to be a downer mm -hmm. or difficult you know what i'm saying so it's an opportunity for all of us to just look at this stuff it is and, i know what i have uh, learned from around these days is the extent and 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 to appreciate the ang the amount of anger and how right. it needs to be expressed right. and how right. to and uh, e I always understood it to some degree, but I understand it even more now. And yeah. uh, and just want to now what can we do to help? It's, I guess is, is what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, that's what someone else was asking as well. It's and it's a hard question. Yeah, Just, well, I, yeah, well, I mean, there are the protests out there, but really, if you can't get outside, if you're not able yeah. to, I would say if you're not able to get outside, we talked about it a couple of days ago, if you're not able to get outside, look within. Absolutely. Two, register to vote, vote code blue. Absolutely. That's the, that's the bare minimum. But let's get someone else's question. Yeah, Go, Audrey, Thank you, you Carol. Thank you. All right, um, Emmanuel, you're up next. Yeah. Beautiful, Matt. Are you there? Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for doing these. Uh, they've been amazing. Um, so I have a question. Uh, so I started writing, a piece started coming out about uh, my mum's side of the family, uh, which is, which has a horrible history kind of. They, they're immigrants and the way that they behaved in the way that it's traumatized my mom mm -hmm. and her sisters and all of that. Um, I want to tell this story, but like, I'm not quite sure how. And all of the sisters and the brothers, there are many of them, are so lovely and loving and just get on with it, despite all of these things that, you know, there are ups and downs, but they're always like, the same. I don't know how they do it, but they're always lovely and always family oriented. Um, so my question is how to go about painting these figures, like the, the father figure who was horrible, but with love. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I still want to, I want to pay respect to my mom's family, basically. And um, they're very funny people also. So I think there's going to be a lot of comedy in there, uh, comedy and drama, I guess, but it's about approaching them, I guess, about uh, maybe I was thinking of interviewing them or like talking to them and, and having their like firsthand stories. Um, but I, I'm afraid about my angle, basically, like as a, I didn't grow up with them, I grew up far away from them. And so I feel like a little bit of an outsider. Um, yes, so how to give homage to you. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna take a lot of listening, you know, a lot of listening. If you didn't, if you say you didn't grow up with them, um, you might have a, 
uh, you know, keep an open mind about what they've gone through. So if you say, you know, you're already, you labeling it a horrible, this, that, you know what I mean? You have to keep a very open mind as open as possible. So you can see all sides, you know, and I don't know if you're going to, you're through thinking of writing a, a what, what kind of thing you're thinking of writing, but as much as you can, I think interviewing them is a great idea, you know, um, and if you want to do like a, like, you mean like video interview or just an audio kind of interview, um, but keep an open mind as much as possible so that you can see, let them as much as you can, let them tell their story. You see what I mean? Um, um, but really you have to keep your mind open because once you start deciding I mean, you know, once you start deciding what it is before you really, really, really taken it in. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it was, you say it was awful. I'm not saying, hey, come on, Emmanuel. It's, it was sunny and rosy. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I'm just saying just if once you start closing your mind off too much, you're going to lose the ability to hear what they're saying. So I think, I think interviewing is a great idea. And um, just go slowly and take your time um no story or no aspect of the story is insignificant you know and see how it goes how far are you along with it um i've i've just got vignettes of huh? all of i've just got little pieces of uh and like the fact that i'm saying it's horrible they're actually my mom's words <laughs> it's like but the other sisters might not have those same words. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's good. That you, I just grew up with my mom's tale of her childhood. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've got an out, like an outline, I guess. And I have an outline of several of their arcs, I guess, of, of several mm -hmm. of the, the sisters and of the father as well. It's quite, uh, it, yeah, it, it's better than fiction. <laughs> it's just, uh -huh. it's insane. The, uh -huh of all of these people that yeah. are so insane um, and they often say you know the saying that you know sometimes children with the same parents grow up in very different families so that might be part of it too you know um but it sounds like a great project just keep your ears open you know keep yeah. listening you know sounds great thank you very much thank, thank you thanks. thanks emmanuel um, we're actually going to take a question from social media. Um, we've got a question from Jean. Uh, do you use a certain program, i.e. final draft or playwriting, or do you write by hand and then type up? I wondered if you had a particular format in developing a play, i.e. outline on butcher paper on the wall. I am writing by hand and I'm looking for a way to lay out the scenes I have written so I can see the bigger picture. Oh, wow. How fun, Jean. Uh, yeah, there's there are lots of, I mean, one, I don't use a particular, um, pr I mean, I happen to use, uh, what is it, Microsoft Word, just because there it is, you know what I'm saying? It's, I don't think it's the best. When I do screenplays and teleplays, I tend to use Final Draft because it automatically formats. So it just saves me some time down the road. But if you're just writing text, um, I mean, just typing, like writing a novel or a poem or even a play, I suppose. I, I think Microsoft Word will do. I like to use my own formatting, my own style of formatting when I'm writing a play. Um, when I'm writing a screenplay or a teleplay, I tend to do industry standard because I'm uh, writing them for their works for hire. So it's, a, it's more of a job job. Um, to get the bigger picture, yeah, butcher paper on a wall. That sounds like fun. Um, getting it on a wall, getting on your feet, your physical feet and and writing on a big canvas could help you see it. Also, my favorite kind of thing, because I uh, have a really small apartment and we don't have any wall space really to write on. I, yay, look, they're uh, index cards. It's little pieces of butcher paper. Um, they are uh, relatively affordable. And the great thing about these, you can write different, uh, if you want scenes on them, you know? Um, you can, you can use them for research. You can write scenes on them, like scene one, if you're writing a, like a, a screenplay, scene one, scene two, scene three, like that. And then you can carry them around with you. So when you go outside, now that New York City is open, I don't know where you're living, Jean, but New York City just opened up. So we're all going outside, sitting in the park, social distancing with our masks on, and you can take your cards and you can flip through them and 
visualize your screenplay, play, teleplay, novel, even, you know? Um, also, the great thing about index cards, I like the small kind because you don't, you're not allowed to write much on these. You can't because they're small. And so you have to be real, like, succinct and specific. So I would say have fun with some index cards. Um, I would suggest that. You can also put index cards on a bulletin board, which gives you that butcher paper on the wall kind of thing, um, which is possible. Um, I'd say, you know, these are, these are pretty cool. And yeah. What was, did that answer the question? <laughs> I, think, I think, yes, I think that was great. I feel okay. satisfied. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll take another in-person in question, so to speak. Um, Bob, go for it. Hello. Hello, Bob. How are you? I'm good, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, uh, question about something I've been working on since I spoke last, which is very much, like very sort of heavy genre. You know, it's very much, not a realistic work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think about some of your work, particularly uh, sort of The Last Black Man, where I feel like you engage with all of this sort of cultural consciousness. Like you're engaging with uh, so much stuff that isn't just two people in a room. Like you're really opening up where it's, it's not his backstory. It's like the backstory of America, the world, you know, kind of dealing more in tropes and genre. But still, I feel like a connection to the characters in your work, even when it does feel almost like a review, which usually you don't have that emotional kind of accumulation that for me is, I think, how you get to connect. And I'm struggling personally when I write to like take these characters seriously because it is chopped up. And I also want to make sure that even though it is, again, almost like a genre um, piece that that people also take them seriously. You know, like I'm wondering how would you approach and how did you approach when people aren't gonna be on stage for 90 minutes telling you their truth? How did you connect with them and how do you think an audience can connect with them? Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, sometimes people who write, you know, in, the, in more of a, an experimental way, which last black man, the death of the last black man in the whole entire world, AKA the Negro Book of the Dead. Yes, and it's experimental um, and I wrote it 1990, which was a long time ago, um, but it it has some of the things that I still hold that I still feel they're very valuable. The heart. It's not just a heady intellectual piece. Pretty much, you know, none of my work is like that. It's a taste thing. If your work is more, I, I don't know, not you know, but for me, it's always the the not just the the what's going on up here, but what's going on here, you know. Where are the character's feet? Where are her feet? Where are his feet? What does she want? Which is desire. You know what I mean? Um, and if it's just, it, it, it's simple. Like, what is he, like a well, character, you could say, what, is, what does this character want? She wants to talk. That's good, That's, that'll do. She wants to tell you everything. Even the shit you don't want to hear about. She want to get in your face and talk to you all day. That's something, right? That's something. So I just connect with desire. That's sort of my thing that I connect and, with. And if, but if, if, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you're dealing with people who aren't, like I'm doing a, not, not human, and I'm not doing a vampire, I'm not doing a werewolf, but you know, like you still try and isolate and find their hey, heart and what, what they mean, want. Not human, not human. Like, not, well, I don't know, non human, like a dog has a heart. Uh, uh, I would go out on a limb, Bob, and say that a rock has a heart. That's just me. You know, a tree has a heart and you can't convince me otherwise, you, right? That's why people go and hug trees. Why do you think people go and hug trees? Because trees have hearts. They just don't look like dude, that thing, you know, that we have. And so people not recognizing themselves in the other discount the other. Gosh, doesn't that sound familiar? That's what's going on outside right now. You see what I'm saying? Trees have hearts. So do whales and stones and mushrooms and it's all here, right? And that's what you, you wanna vibe with that, I don't know, mushroom or tumbleweed or I don't know what you got in your play, vampire or werewolf. Look, the music's happening outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? It's all beating. You just got to get on the frequency of that other being. And that's 
you know, you know, I mean, in the most extreme case, and this is not who you are at all, Bob, but the most extreme case, it was the cop in Minneapolis who put his knee in George Floyd's neck because he didn't see him as a being, right? So that's the worst possible case. And we, but we, we, good people, good loving people create those same kinds of weird infractions every day, right? Right? Which is why we throw our, which is why we litter sometimes, or, you know, that, those little things that we do. You know what I'm saying? So find the heart. That, I mean, that's what I would say. Obviously, that's what I would say because it's me talking. Find the heart of your characters. Every character has a heart in my playbook. And when you find the heart, then you're connecting with the pulse, the vibe of it. And then it will speak to you if you listen and hear, and you can hear. And then you're into something. You're on to something. <laughs> That's the music. They, they, they got me in the march. Uh, you know, they, got, they, they brought out the band this weekend. And people were like, ah, da, 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 da. It, was great. it was really great this weekend. I got the band today. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Thank you. No, it's true. Thank you, SLP. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to Carla. We got about ten minutes. Okay. Hello, hi SLP. How are you? Hey, Carla. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Um, so my question is, I've been writing a few different things, but right now I'm writing something that's more like a novel, and I find myself, I have like an outline. And this is just the first draft. So I'm like going through it. I have an outline. I have like a little goal that I have. I know what's going to happen in three chapters from now. I feel very good about that. But then when I sit down and write, I feel like I'm like in that state of like, I'm, I feel like I'm falling asleep. And I'm like, I don't want to say that my story is boring because I feel like it isn't. But I feel like I'm writing and I'm like, oh, what do I write in this next sentence? Even though I know what's going to happen next, I'm just like, uh, where do I go? And I don't know if it's the fact that it's a novel and I'm like, it's, it's like so slow through it, you know, because a novel has a lot of detail and all that. And so I'm like, I'm like, what, why, why can I just connect? Like at the beginning, at the beginning, I found myself writing all the time. I feel like I found this law where things are just going really slow. Um, so I don't know what to do about it. I don't know if that makes sense. It totally um, makes sense. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, anyway, no, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. No, it totally, totally makes sense. I mean, you're, you're basically doing the work. You're sitting down, you have a daily practice, I'm guessing. A daily yeah, practice. Right. I, I started doing, cause I, I wanted to write two hours every day, but then I can't, I realize I'm not a person that can sit for two hours. I just, yeah. it's too much. I'm Puerto Rican. I need to stand up. <laughs> and do I will quote stuff you. Thank you for the week and I need to stand up. Yeah, you can. <laughs> to do. So what I've been doing is since we do 20 minutes here, I've been like using those two hours and cutting them into 20 minutes. So I do 20 minutes, get up, do something else, another 20 minutes. And like, I try to do that. How, and, but, and still when you sit down for those 20 minutes, it's like, uh, yeah, I feel like I hear the want, 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 and I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. So no, this is it's. it's e I mean, I I don't know if it's easy or not, but this is what I'm I'm gonna suggest. So great, you got you. So you did the first step. You you did it. You were like, okay, I have a goal. I'm gonna do two hours. Ha! Okay, great. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna lower the bar. Twenty minutes mm -hmm. in pieces. Great, great. <laughs> lower the bar, Carla. No one's no one's watching right okay none of yeah. us have pants on right <laughs> remember think about it <laughs> hey carla 10 minutes i bet no you minutes. can write 10 minutes and just go blah, 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 blah. oh good i made it to that little chapter marker right because in your chapter yeah it's like okay jane's gonna wake up and she's gonna make coffee and she's gonna go to the store right that little bit in mm -hmm. the your chapter, for example, all I have to do is get Jane out of bed, and make coffee, and get her to the store. Blah. Right? Yeah. It mm -hmm. might not be the best writing ever. It doesn't matter. And de -de 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 -de. ten minutes goes off, and hey, hooray! Now you can celebrate because you've accomplished the goal. So you got to yeah. lower the bar in both ways, in terms of how much time you're sitting. Lower. Mm. Not total. I still, you, you, two hours is a lovely bit of time. Chop it up into smaller bits. Like you're, you're, you're someone who like, look, Jane, look, you're going to eat a sandwich. Ah, yeah, you can't eat all that. You got to cut it up into small pieces, smaller pieces. Yeah. 
Okay. Small and also lower the bar in terms of uh, quality. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Let it be shitty. No one's yeah. watching. No one's going to see. You don't have to show it to anyone. Unless you like that. You need to like post it every day on Insta. No. No. I no. <laughs> you too, right? Yeah. I have only told my sister. I'm like, no, I'm just writing something. And my friends are like, when am I going to read it? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's talk about something else. Right. Well, <laughs> say we'll get together and have a, a, a big mm. dinner party when Corona, you know, is like over. It's which over. Gives you like a year and a half. Yeah. You're on the safe side. <laughs> So, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But yeah. You, and even then you don't have to let them read it until you really feel comfortable, but small bits, small, smaller amounts of time and be bold and just vomit it out and, and divide your chapters up into small chunks of plot of, of story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean? Make it small. Yeah, I, I've done that in the one I'm doing now. I've written like small sentences, like e even in this, in, even in the page, I'm like, okay, I need to get to that line and yes. sentence and that's like, exactly okay. it all right okay just, well thank you yeah. uh-huh you're welcome thank you Carla. Yeah. thank you thank um all right up next we've got about five minutes left we've got melania hello susan Hi. thank you how are you first of all i want to say to carol that my heart is with her and i remember my first time doing the watch me work in the computer, through Twitter, with how around that thank you for, for this. So, and always, Carol, always there, first in one table, in the middle. So I am praying for her and the family. That's the, that's the first thing. Oh, and you were, you were talking about children with her, and you know that I am writing my theater play for, for children. And one thing that is happening to me is that thanks to, to you, Susan, and, and all this group and all these years with the Watch Me Work, one thing that happened to me happened to me was that I could discover myself as a writer. To say that I write to show up to my work and doing that, I can say that I am writing. And that is something new for, for my family, especially for my girls. And in this time with the coronavirus and all the homeschooling that we ended because we are on summer vacation and all that stuff, they they know that I have my watch me work. And they say, mommy, you have your watch me work? Yes, I have my watch me work. Okay, go, go, go. And I bought them uh, timers. So each of us, we have timers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we do our work together. And what I, I would like to know is that now that I am walking in this journey, writing my story and doing my work is how can I share this with my daughters? If, if there is something that you do with your child, with your beautiful boy that sometimes has, goes there and say hello, because I, they know me all these years, of course, as a mom, but I, there was a time in my life that I was very sad and I didn't know what I was doing. And now maybe more than once, I don't know what I am doing, but I write about it. And I am doing my work and I am trying to show up and have the courage to, you know, to discover myself and all these new things that are appearing in me. This sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's happiness. It's, it's this mix of emotions. So I would like to know if there is some kind of thought that you have about sharing this path that I am walking into with the writing with my daughters. I, I think that's such a beautiful question. And I, I'm going to give you an answer. It, it might not fit for you, but I wonder if for a little bit longer you could be selfish and hold it for yourself. You know, I, I mean, in my experience, you know, we as mothers or parents, you know, we give and give. Mm -hmm. And because this is still relatively new for you and you're discovering so many wonderful things about yourself. And if you've already bought your daughter's timers, that's that's a, a huge gift. You're allow your example to be the thing that they are getting right now. Okay. You know what I mean? Mommy's got watch me work. Mommy's writing 
things, you know, mommy's working on things. Mommy feels like that's important and we respect her. Allow that to be the gift that you are giving them and, and recognize that as a huge gift that you're giving them. Just your presence at your writing desk and your commitment to yourself is a huge gift. So if we could for a little while, Melania, let's say that that is a lot you're giving right now and the rest keep for yourself for a little while longer. Let's be, let us be selfish a little while. Like in the plane, you know, the airplane, they always say, put your own mask on first before you put your mask on, you know, your child. Enjoy this, this oxygen, this, that you're giving yourself. Okay. You know what I mean? Enjoy, and, and know that, that it's, it's, it's okay to allow yourself to be fed by your own spirit right now okay and know and also know that you are your presence as a someone as a mother and a woman committed to herself is teaching them huge volumes mm -hmm. and, and if you want to give them some instruction tell them to get a meditation practice <laughs> <laughs> okay you know, what I mean? you know you can say hey here's something you can do and that's something they can do on their own <laughs> With five minutes in the morning you know what i mean um but but you but just 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 in, enjoy be be a little selfish a little you know okay okay thank you you're welcome you're welcome thank you melania thank you slp so just about six o'clock oh all right here we are oh, crazy crazy it's, um go yay. ahead sorry no i'm just saying hi <sighs> hi <laughs> um so uh you know as usual We'll come back again tomorrow. And if you want to sign up to be in the in the Zoom, I know the links went out a little late this week, and so oh. I'm sorry, but they're all up there now. Busy. Um, yeah. busy. <laughs> yeah, well. um, but you know, they're there now. So sign up by 3 p.m. Um, Eastern, and I'll send you the link between 3 and 4 p.m. Yeah. Or 3 and 4 30. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you so SLP. Much. You rock. Beautiful. Yay, so do y'all. Bye, love you guys. Have a good evening. Get your light.